welcome to the next module of design to prevent fire and explosion. Up till now we have studied about the various purging methodologies through which we can inert any workplace where the chances of flammable vapors are on the higher side. Now in this particular module we will discuss about the static electricity, what is the static charge, electrostatic discharge, what is the impact of a streaming current electrostatic voltage drop, capacitance and how to control the static electricity. Now let us have a look about the static electricity. This is a co common ignition source uh, within chemical plant is a spark resulting from a static charge built up and sudden discharge. A static electricity is perhaps the most elusive of uh, ignition sources. And remember uh, we cannot avoid the generation of uh, ignition sources and uh, uh, the elastic electricity is uh, one of the foremost uh, destructive uh, mode of uh, ignition source. So, despite considerable efforts, uh, serious explosion and fires caused by static ignition continue to plug the chemical process industry. Now, a static charge built up uh, is a result of physically separating a poor conductor from a good conductor or another poor conductor. So, this is the brief uh, outlay of uh, the static electricity. Now question arises that how static electricity is created or generated. Now friction is one of the foremost uh, source of generation of static electricity. So friction of one electrical insulator against another displays the electrons which accumulate on one of the surfaces. Mother nature does not like electrical imbalance and uh, the physical world is intended to be the at electrical neutrality. So, mother nature will adopt the process of remedy of the problem if you do not. So, arcing can either ignite or a gaseous mixture or a shock worker. So, mother nature definitely attempt to neutralize uh, the any kind of charge imbalance within the system. So, once uh, static uh, uh, electricity or a static charge is created, it does not go away. It will not conduct away since uh, it is sitting on a non-conducting material and that is why it is called the static electricity or static charge. So, it must be deliberately dissipated with the var variety of tools available or otherwise the, the um, nature will do on its own. So, static charges will arc and ignite a gaseous mixture if the interior static charge is exposed to the ground and that is one of the most serious problem. Because sometimes this spark or arc they may have a such sufficient energy to ignite any kind of flammable material provided they are within the LFL and UFL zone. Now uh, let us discuss about uh, the static charge. So when different material touch each other the electron move across uh, the interface from one surface to other. Upon separation more of the electrons remain on uh, one surface than on the other. So, one material becomes positively charged and other negatively charged. Now, if both materials are good conductors the charge built up uh, as a result of separation is small because of electrons are able to squirrely between the surface. Now, if however, uh, one or both of the materials are insulator or a poor conductors, electrons are not as mobile and are trapped on one of the surface and magnitude of the charge is much greater. So, the char if charges, the, the charge density is on the higher side, then definitely whatever is spark being generated or whatever arc is generated must have a, a higher intensity. Now, there are certain examples. Uh, like uh, walking across a rug, placing different material in a tumbler dryer, removing a sweater and uh, combing hair and especially the dry hair. So, whenever there is a friction then the charge accumulation or the generation of the charge is uh, on the proximity. The clinging fabric and some at sometimes audible spark especially applicable when you are wearing the silk cloths etc leaking steam that contacts the underground conductors, pumping a non-conductive liquid through a pipe, mixing immiscible liquid, pneumatically conveying solids. So, these are some of the examples through which the static charge may generate, may accumulate, may transfer. 
Now, uh, you may have a look that a dangerous energy near the flammable vapors is around 0.1 millijoule. And if you walk uh, across the carpet or uh, you are simply walking across the floor, then the generation of uh, static charge is around 20 millijoule. So, you can anticipate that how dangerous it is. So, it is the foremost requirement to remove whatever excess charge or static charge built up on the surface to avoid any kind of fire and explosion hazard. So, electrostatic discharge usually an electrostatic discharge occurs when two materials at different potential or polarities come close enough together to generate a charge transfer. In an explosive environment, this sudden transfer of charge may be so energetic to be an source of ignition. So, remember we must aware this type of danger because these are certain hidden dangers in our workplace. To prevent these ignition, one must understand that how charge accumulate uh, on an object that is uh, required, how charges discharged by means of charge transfer, how to estimate the resulting energy discharge in relation to minimum ignition energy of the explosive environment. So, we must answer and we must know the knowledge of uh, these questions. Now, uh, sometimes we may experience the electrostatic leak. So, question arises that what is an electrostatic leak? The charge conditions across the pipe wall can increase high enough to exceed material breakdown. And this breakdown phenomena produces a small burned hole about the size of a pinhole through a pipe wall that can leak the minute quantities of gases. So, uh, in the previous uh, slides we have discussed uh, uh, that uh, there is an accumulation of uh, charges uh, on an object. So, question arises that how charges are accumulated on uh, an object. So, there are four charge accumulation processes that are relevant to the dangerous electrostatic discharge in a chemical plant. Number one, the contact and frictional charging. So, when two materials with one being an insulator are brought into contact a charge separation occurs uh, at the interface. If the two objects are then separated, some of the charge uh, remain uh, separated and giving the two materials opposite but equal charge. That means, the neutralization of the charge aspect. Second is the double layer charging. Charge separation occurs on a microscopic scale in a liquid at a, any interface may be solid liquid, gas liquid or liquid liquid. So, as the liquid flows, it carries one type of charge leaving behind the other charge of opposite sign on the other surface. Uh, the best example is a, a pipe wall. The third one is uh, the induction charging. This is applicable only uh, to the material that are electrically conductive. So, you can see that you are having one metal sphere over here. This is the insulated stand and this is the ebonite rod. So, the charge accumulation takes place in these three figures. So, first one is the charge accumulation and then if you provide the grounding wire. So, one charge that is negative charge is being transferred to the ground and then it remains the positively charged. So, sometimes it is in uh, you may take the things in a positive manner, sometimes it is in a negative manner. Now, uh, induction charging the person with insulated shoes may approach uh, an overhead vessel that is uh, positively charged. The electron in person's body migrate towards the positive charge of the vessel, hence accumulating an equal quantity of positive charge on opposite side of the body, leaving the lower part of the body positively charged by induction. So, when a metal object is touched, there is a transfer of electrons creating a spark. Sometimes in our day to day affair, you may experience this type of uh, induction charging through your body. The last uh, uh, part is that charging by transport. So, when charged liquid droplets or solid particles settle on an isolated object, the object is charged. The transfer charge is a function of the object's capacitance and of the conductivities of the droplet, particle and interfaces. So, this is again a very use, uh, useful phenomena and a very common phenomena in chemical engineering aspect. 
Now question, another question is that how charge is discharged by means of charge transfer. So, a charge object can discharge to a ground or to an oppositely charged uh, object when the field intensity exceeds by 3 uh, mega volt per uh, meter breakdown voltage of um, air or when the surface reaches the maximum charge density by different 6 methods. So, there are 6 methods to which uh, it uh, reaches the maximum charge density maybe because of a spark, propagating brush, conical pile brush lightning uh, like uh, lightning like and corona discharge so in this particular figure uh, you can see uh, that uh, this is a typical uh, filling operation when the solids are being filled in a vessel and uh, uh, they are passed through the hoppers so the uh, because uh, solid particles they by the friction or by the transfer they may charge they, they may generate the static uh, electricity or static charge so this particular vessel is uh, properly grounded like this this grounded thermoball to all metals now there are certain uh, propagating brush discharge so that the charge density may not reach to the dangerous level there is this is again the brush discharge these are the non conductive linings so, by this way uh, you can adopt uh, uh, you, you, the methodology of charge transfer to some other place and through which uh, through this way you can discharge the whatever charge being generated during the vessel filling operation or the transfer of the sol uh, uh, solid material uh, to uh, the ground. So, that uh, you can neutralize the, the vessel or you can neutralize the things as per your requirement. Uh, uh, there is another aspect that is called the spark discharge that is the discharge between the two metallic objects because both objects are conductive the electrons move to exit at a single point of the charged object and they enter the second object at a single point and this is therefore an energetic spark that can ignite a flammable dust or a gas. Another is a propagating brush discharge. So, discharge from grounded conductor when it uh, approaches a charged uh, insulator that is backed by a conductor. So, these discharges are energetic and they can ignite the flammable gases and dust. Another is the conical pile discharge. This is uh, a form of a brush type discharge that occurs at the conical surface uh, like we have uh, seen in the previous figure. Um, uh, of a pile of a powder. The necessary condition for discharge are a powder with a very high resistivity, a powder with the coarse particle, a powder with a high charge to mass ratio, filling rates about 0.5 kilogram per second. So, these uh, because uh, the filling rate is on the higher side, so the charge density or the charge accumulation or, or generation of charge would be on the higher side. So, these are the relatively intense discharge with energies up to several hundred millijoules and therefore, they can ignite flammable gases and dust. Now, brush discharge, the discharge between a relatively sharp pointed uh, conductor, usually the radius uh, of about 0.1 to 100 millimeter and either another conductor or a charge insulated surface. This discharge radiates from the conductor in a brush like configuration and this discharge is less intense compared to the with the compared with that point to point spark discharge and it is unlikely to ignite dust. However, brush discharge can ignite flammable gases. So, the gravity is on the uh, higher side. Another uh, uh, method is lightning like discharges that is discharge from a cloud in the air over the powder. It is known from the experiments that lightning like discharge do not occur in vessel with volume less than 60 meter cube or in silos where diameter is less than 3 meter. There is currently no physical evidence that lightning like discharges have resulted in industrial deflagration. The corona discharge, it is uh, similar to the brush discharge, the electrode conductor has a sharp point, the discharge from such an electrode has sufficient energy to ignite only the most sensitive gases. 
like ex, um, hydrogen. So, here you can see the accumulation of uh, charges. So, this is a non conductor. Another uh, concept is uh, the streaming current and especially when you are transferring any flammable material from one place to another place, uh, the concept of streaming pl uh, current plays a very vital role. So, a streaming current uh, is the flow of uh, electricity, electricity produced by transferring electrons from one surface to another by flowing fluid or solid, especially valuable when you are transferring hydrocarbon from one place to another place. So, when a liquid or a solid flows through a pipe like metal or a glass, an electrostatic charge develops on the streaming material. So, this current is analogous to a current um, in an electrical circuit. So, sometimes uh, you may need to encounter the, the things related to the relaxation time, the time for charge to dissipate by leakage. So, the concept of this relaxation time is again important. The lower the conductivity, the higher the dielectric constant and the longer the time. So, that is uh, the concept and we will discuss this relaxation aspect in subsequent slides. Now, this picture shows that uh, how uh, the generated uh, uh, the, um, charge is streaming just like current. So, this is uh, uh, a flow of a material which is being uh, uh, flowing from one place to another place. Uh, you can, you can uh, take the example of a vessel filling operation. Here, the positive and uh, both negative charges, they are coming towards the uh, vessel. And sometimes if this vessel is uh, not equipped with the uh, proper safety devices, the spark may generate and the content may be blown up or if uh, this is a flammable liquid or a vapor, then definitely the destructive uh, um, aspect may occur in due course of time. So, due care must be taken. Another is uh, the splash charge, especially it is uh, applicable in the vessel filling operation. So, uh, you are filling uh, a vessel and uh, uh, the, um, the discharge point or the outlet of this uh, pipe is at this point. So, whenever the, the fluid moves or it fills to uh, uh, this uh, particular vessel, the charge may accumulate or charge may transfer to the various surfaces, sometimes at the upper part of the, the um, uh, liquid and sometimes it may get deposited um, at the wall of uh, this vessel. Sometimes this type of a problem when you are dumping the powder or bags to um, storage area or anywhere else, then you may experience this type of uh, problem, the negative charge particles and the po positive charge particle. So, you have to take the due care while handling such type of uh, scenario. This is a very common uh, aspect that is a contact and uh, frictional charging. So, when you are moving across any surface, uh, maybe floor, maybe carpet, maybe grass, etc., uh, based on the material of your uh, soul, uh, the charge may accumulate or charge may generate. So, when they find a favorable condition, the spark may be created, and that is why. And if um, the, ch the chances are on the higher side, when your shoe is equipped with the iron shoe nails. So, um, uh, be practical and be aware about uh, such particular scenario. Sometimes you may experience uh, that uh, the charge may transfer from one surface to another surface through induction. It is just like this, this particular gentleman may be previously, they, um, he, he was having the neutral charge, but since this is a backfilling operation. Uh, and through which the po some positive charge is generated in due course of time and this charge is get transferred to uh, this gentleman. So, sometimes he, he may experience the, the generation of a spark provided that uh, sufficient uh, neutralization or sufficient source is available this, uh, at this particular point of time. Uh, sometimes uh, the accumulation of charge may take place uh, in a static vessel where the charge in and a charge out may be in the in, in neutral side. So, sometimes you may experience the accumulation of charge within the vessel without the reason unknown and sometimes it may pass on to some other surface. Now, this is again uh, the electrostatic, sometimes uh, the electrostatic voltage drop may create a problem. 
especially when uh, you are adopting the concept of uh, vessel filling operation. Now, this is uh, the glass lined uh, pipe with uh, a certain fluid is flowing through uh, this glass lined pipe and uh, the flu um, this pipe is connected to this uh, vessel where this vessel is being filled by this particular uh, uh, pipe. Now, this is a glass lined or glass vessel and a some, some uh, positive charge being uh, generated through the flow of this particular fluid and it is being transferred to this glass lined vessel. Now, if you have taken the, the due care then um, this may be grounded or this may be bonded with uh, some other for the neutralization and uh, indeed you require to ground this uh, particular glass lined vessel also. So, uh, the fluid flows through the feed uh, line and drops into the tank and a streaming current that is uh, represented by I s built up the charge and voltage in the feed line to the vessel and in the vessel itself. So, voltage from the electrical ground in the metal line to the end of the glass pipe is calculated through this formula V is equal to I r that is the common formula. So, V is equal to I s r or resistance is calculated through this formula. So, as the area of uh, conductor increases, the resistance decreases and if the conductor length is increases, the resistance increases that is the common phys physics phenomena. Let us have a discussion about the capacitance uh, that is the build up of uh, a charge on one surface related to another surface produces a capacitor. The capacitance C of a body is uh, denoted by C is equal to Q upon V, V is the voltage and Q is the charge. The capacitance of a spherical body is determined through this formula. Um, uh, now, for two parallel plates you can find out the capacitance uh, with the help of this formula where epsilon r is the relative dielectric constant that is uh, unitless, epsilon naught is the permittivity uh, usually at, at around 8.85 uh, into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter new square. Now, r is the sphere, the sphere radius, a is the area of the surface which is in question and c is the capacitance and l is the thickness of the dielectric. Now, uh, we must uh, discuss about uh, uh, the controlling static electricity aspect. The charge built up resulting spark and the ignition of a flammable material is an unavoidable event. Now, if control methods are not properly used, then uh, the results could be more destructive. So, however, these problems were recognized by design engineers and hence special features were installed to prevent uh, sparks by eliminating the built up and accumulation of static charge that is a key feature of uh, designing of uh, uh, equipment. Then ignition by inerting the surroundings. So, we have discussed the inerting methodology in the previous module. So, in case if you cannot avoid the generation of uh, a charge, then you must adopt the inerting methodology so that the LFL and UFL uh, limits uh, cannot be reached. Now, inerting is the most effective and reliable methods for preventing ignition because uh, ultimately when you are walking or you are flowing a fluid through a pipe, you cannot avoid the generation of a static charge. Now, uh, how we can control the static electricity? This is uh, one of the methodology that uh, and uh, this uh, rough diagram depicts that how we can control. Now, here there are certain vessels they are stored and you can connect these vessels uh, through uh, either grounding or a bonding. So, th these are you can see that these are the connected through like this. So, this is the method of uh, uh, bonding through which you can bond each other and then adopt the grounding. This is the Faustin, Faustin ground cable to rack. Now, this is uh, you can see that uh, uh, here is, is the grounding. So, bonding and grounding these two are a very effective methodology to prevent the hazard of uh, um, static electricity. Now, uh, there are certain important summary points which uh, we have to look that ground and bond prior to any transfer because uh, uh, you do not have any clue about that how much static charge is being accumulated over the surface. 
non conductive fluids are most more likely for static generation bottom filling or a top filling using dip tubes uh, uh, dip tube less uh, uh, static generation dip tube is just like that uh, suppose you are filling um, uh, any vessel so if uh, you have a a, a tube like this that may be just a few inch above the the bottom of uh, the vessel so uh, it may create a less problem of uh, generation of static electricity compared to this tube where you are having uh, a tip at bit higher point so the the charge may find more larger area for generation uh, slow filling will generate less static uh, electricity than uh, rapid filling. It is quite obvious uh, we have discussed in the previous slides. Uh, magic number slow start velocity of 3 feet per second until loading lens is uh, submerged. Spray filling uh, keep nozzles from extending into the container to avoid pulling in air and creating flammable vapor mixture. Inerting eliminates the potential for combustion, but does not eliminate the static. So, uh, you avoid the formation of uh, the combustible zone because you cannot eliminate the generation of static electricity charges. Padding with nitrogen may not achieve the same full potential, sometimes uh, it is uh, effective and sometimes it is not. So, in this particular module, we have discussed uh, the static electricity generation what are the theoretical aspect of uh, these static electricity and how we can avoid uh, the, uh, the destructiveness of this static electricity. Um, for more studies, uh, you can have a look of these uh, references. Thank you very much.